Okay, so I think I got this thing pretty, pretty hot now. I can at least rotate it here. And do it to move back and forth a little bit. Yeah, it's coming off. There we go. Just had to heat that thing up real good. Now, as far as this thing goes, this is going right in some LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner. I'm just going to drop the whole darn thing in there. Now, this Totally Awesome Cleaner bath is brown. And it normally looks like this. Pale yellow. Well, the reason this is brown is because I've used it to clean parts before, and I also found that I used to be throwing that stuff away when it looked like that, but silly me, uh, it still works. Just because it's brown doesn't mean it doesn't work anymore. So, it works, believe me, it still works. So, that stuff's going to sit in there for a few minutes, not long, but it's going to sit in there. So, now Believe it or not, these bearings don't feel that bad. Now, I think it's still pretty warm. It needs to be cleaned up, and I'm going to take the timing cover off right now. For those of you that have never timed a Sato engine, now you're going to get to see how it's done. I've got a video online that already shows how it's done, but I'll be doing it again with this one, because I am taking this thing all the way down. Good thing about Sato gaskets, these are my head screws. Sato gaskets is they're usually pretty hardy and may even survive. Uh, the gasket on that back plate seems okay. If not, I'll ask the owner of the engine if he'd like me to buy a new gasket set. I might have some gaskets on hand here. I got quite a few Sato parts. Okay, here we go. Oh, nice. Sweet. Okay, anyway, I just got excited there for a minute because I saw that this Sato crankshaft actually has the drive gears ground into the crankshaft itself. Which is odd. Because other Sato 65 engines that I've had have actually a pinion gear there. that I'm pretty sure 65 has that. I'll have to do some checking. That might actually indicate the age of this engine a little bit better. That might be a little bit newer design. But uh, probably still got I already asked the owner about this drive washer. It's pretty nasty. It's, it's really banged up looking. Personally I wouldn't want that but we'll find out. I'll throw a lot of oil in here in front of this thing and we'll heat this guy up some more. Those bearings actually don't feel or sound too bad at all. Maybe I'll just let him take a look at this video and determine if he wants me to do anything more than this. I mean, not bad at all, really. Not bad, not bad. Alrighty, now well, let's take a look at this piston here real quick. Let's pull this thing out. You want to do that? Mm. Okay, that thing's still really stuck there. I'm gonna really have to oil that up. Let me heat this up some more. Get this ring freed up. That is totally. Mm. Mm. Working it, but we'll get some oil on it. Go apply some real heat to this thing. Oil this groove up too. I don't know if you can tell, the LA is totally awesome. Clean to look like it cleaned up the sides of the piston here a little bit. I'll have to get a toothbrush onto the top. And I got some oil in there. Let me go hit this with some. Uh, Let me wrap up the disassembly portion of this video. Obviously, as you can see, it's completely disassembled. I believe where I left off, I was trying to get the uh, crankshaft out of 
out of the crankcase. Well, as it turned out, I heated it up a lot, oiled it really well, then tried to tap it out, and that wasn't working. So I figured I'd throw it in a Ziploc bag and put it in the freezer overnight. So when I got up in the morning, I grabbed it out of the freezer and put this cheap little Harbor Freight battery terminal puller on it and uh, started torquing it down and right when I was uh, starting to see how tight it was that was still on there I decided I'd go out and heat it up again and as I was walking out to the garage to heat it up <coughs> excuse me the uh, the collet just popped right off so I mean and then tapping the crankshaft out was easy from there so anytime you're trying to remove the crankshaft from one of these Sato engines the thing that's going to give you the biggest resistance is this friction fit of the collet and drive or the, the split collet and the drive washer onto that crankshaft. If you can pull that off with a battery puller or something, tapping the crankshaft out is not going to be an issue at all. But if you're actually trying to tap it out or even use the press and you have to fight that mechanical bond as well as the tightness in the crankcase, it becomes really challenging. It can be hard to do and you really risk possibly bending the crankshaft. So here's my cleaned up crankcase. Looks pretty nice in there. Now I did notice that this is not the first time somebody's been in this engine. Uh, there's a little bit of marking in here from where it looks like somebody tried to take a rear bearing out in the past. Which brings me to the bearings anyway. <coughs> here's what the bearings looked like. Came out of that engine. Pretty gross. Rear bearing. I mean they both real notchy. But here's the front bearing. Tell me what you see that's wrong with this. It's shielded on both sides. Should never have, that is really seriously dented here too, should never have shields on both sides of a front bearing. Should always remove one of the shields, the one that faces into the engine so that that bearing can actually get lubrication, the small amount of lubrication that gets in there so it can get lubricated. This putting a double sealed bearing in the front is just waiting for that bearing to fail prematurely. So anyway, I've got new bearings on order, so I'm not going to be able to reassemble this. Uh, just quickly here, um, I mean, this engine looks really nice. It's a really nice shape. I think you can see inside there, nice and clean. I cleaned that up a little bit. Um, here's what the crankshaft now looks like. Now, when I first was looking at this crankshaft while it was still in here, I've opened up many Sato 65s before, 65s and down, and they all had a pinion gear that actually engages in the timing gear. This is the first time I've ever seen a Sato 65 crankshaft that had the timing gears cut into the crankshaft itself. So I was assuming that this was from an 80. Uh, this crankshaft was actually from an 80 and I really can't even find any reviews online that substantiate that. The only thing I can substantiate that maybe this is actually the crop, proper crankshaft for a Sato 65 engine is on Horizon Hobbies website even though these crankshafts are discontinued <clears throat> when you look up the Sato 65 crankshaft it shows a picture of one that looks very much like this where it doesn't have a pinion gear but if you uh, look at the reviews online there's two or three reviews on a, on a site I don't know the name of it off the top of my head where they're older reviews of this 65 engine and you can see how it actually they specifically talk about having a pinion gear that goes on there all the engines from 45 up to 65 had those but anyway so maybe I was incorrect in assuming that this was the wrong crankshaft for the engine but that would lead me to believe that <coughs> that crankshaft and this exhaust don't go together at all because this is the exhaust from a very early edition Sato 65 engine and this would be a replacement crankshaft or from the latest model 65 there is or that was made because that's probably when they would have used that so this engine is not completely original I can tell you that guarantee right now uh, the piston boy this was tough this thing was so on there this is why the engine wouldn't turn over at all this piston was in a situation like this and it was so gummed up there that that wouldn't move nor would this thing rotate at all I mean it was it literally took 20-30 minutes of me oiling this heating it up just to get it to flop around like that 
Uh, actually, the piston's in pretty decent shape. I actually took the ring off too and cleaned the ring groove, and that looks good. So, the only thing that I found that was missing from this engine is uh, they're supposed to be steel or Teflon washers that act as guides in this timing shaft, and they were not present on this engine at all. So, luckily, I've got a buddy that's got some because Horizon is on back order until October, and I need to get this engine. Uh, moving before that, but other than that, there's really nothing of note here that I haven't already mentioned. It's all in really good shape now. This car was completely froze, but now it moves perfectly well. So this thing is basically in a state where, unfortunately, it's just waiting for the bearings to arrive before I can actually finish the video up, get this thing together, and take it for a run.